Honbi train sets. Trying Honbi train sets. Trying Honbi train sets. Trying Honbi train sets. If you want a train set, Trying Honbi make just the one you want. Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this episode we're going to be looking at this Trying Hornby Freightmaster set from 1965. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at this box artwork. Now this is absolutely spectacular. To think that this was painted by an artist in the Trying Factory for, for, for use on these boxes. Obviously it features the Class 31 or Brush Type 2 and all the wagons included in the box. In, the detail is incredible, even down to the lattice work on the signal posts. It shows you the wagons you're going to get inside, and uh, as I mentioned, the 31 on the front. Although the mountainous setting is probably a bit far-fetched for the UK. Having a look at the box ends, you can see this is set RS51. And it was from Arnott Simpsons at a cost of £6.3. shillings. Although if you look on the other side of the box... Apparently it cost £5.19 shillings and sixpence, so they must have had a sale up. But RS51, I've been reliably informed, was produced in this format in about 1964-1965. Now having a look inside the box, we've got uh, the majority of stock. There's no track and there is a wagon missing. Although it does come with this instruction and information manual. This has got a bit of... Uh, Bit of crud all on the back here and a small tear, but it's in very good condition for its age. And the one thing that um, attracted me to this was how good a quality the stock was. Take this United Dairies tank wagon. It is 100% complete with the top cap and it is still pure white. It has not yellowed at all. And the same with the brake van. The white is still white and it's not warped in any way, which some of these brake vans did from this era. In my opinion, this set has seen very little use. This wagon here with the drop side doors appears to be damaged. However, the missing door is actually complete inside the box. So we'll have a look at repairing this later. Wagons like this included in these train sets really did add a, uh, a lot of play value. And you can see that this was a really large set with a good amount of wagons and a nice looking engine. Anybody getting this for Christmas in the 1960s would have been very lucky. The missing wagon, according to the box artwork, is a conflat wagon with three containers on the top. And I was lucky enough to find one in the rummage box at Trains for You. They have various crates full of wagons and I managed to find one complete with the three containers. So I'm going to use this to replace the one that's missing from this box. This again was a good wagon that added a lot of play value with the removable loads. Another wagon this set has got, which is a favourite of mine from this era, is the Triang Toys Pedigree Prams container van. Um, sorry, container wagon. I really do like this. I think this is quite a good uh, model. The detail and decoration is really nice. And obviously a bit of self-promotion there for Triang Toys. The Class 31, or Brush Type 2, as it would have been in the 60s, is in very, very good condition, although the coupling hook on this end is bent, so we're going to have to look at straightening that out. But other than that, it is in very good overall condition, and it looks to be, as I said, to have seen minimal use. There's just the odd bit of um, corrosion on the die casting there, and plenty of fibres wrapped around the axle, so they will need to be removed. So we're going to start by having a look at the Class 31, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my needle nose pliers and I'm going to straighten this coupling hook. I uh, didn't want to replace the coupling hooks if I could help it. These couplings do come off. They are screwed in place on the drive bogey. But I wanted to keep everything as original as possible. So just gently straightening the metal out there. It has straightened nicely and is not uh, broken. I'm going to put the 31 on the test track. Now I'm going to test this with a controller as this motor would pour would pull too much um, current that so I didn't want to use the battery. It proved to be a very intermittent runner. It would shoot off sometimes just as it did there 
And then when you tried to use it again, it wouldn't move. I think it's just a case of lack of use over the last few years and possible dirt build upon the commutator. You can tell this is one of the early issue 31s as the trailing bogey has no pickups on it at all. It is solely reliant on the pickups from the driving bogey itself. To remove the bogey and get inside this model you have to remove this screw that holds the roof on and then gently unclip the roof. There are two clips above each cab and gently pulling pulls the roof off. You can see on the roof there where the motor's been spinning, that's all the old lubrication from the factory. So this was removed with a cotton bud of methylated spirits just to get rid of it all. It came off relatively easily, it's not left any marks on the roof there. Now there should be a sticker there, you can see where it's fallen off, that tells you not to undo that big brass screw. And, but instead to remove this you have to slide this spring piece of metal back. I put that on the magnetic strip there, and once that's gone, the bogey itself just drops out. I'll set the rest of the model aside, and we'll dust that over later. But what I'm going to do now is, this is um, one whole self-contained unit. Pickups and motor and everything are all on one piece here. And it's held in place with that brass screw that goes through the middle and through the magnet. So holding the nut on the other side of my finger, I just undo this screw. And it was relatively tight. I'd be surprised if this has ever been apart since it left the factory in the mid-1960s. But undoing the screw releases this tiny brass nut. Uh, do not lose that. You will need that to reassemble the model. And then the bolt comes out, the, uh, out of the middle there. And then that whole top assembly can lift off. And I'm going to keep that as one piece. I'm not going to mess around with that. As all of the connections and spigots for the pickups are all still in place as they should be. I just moved the spring piece there to release the brushes. These don't look to be in too bad a condition. They are dirty. There's a bit of carbon build upon them, but they're not as worn out as I thought they were going to be. So we'll clean these up later on. Now to get the commutator and the wheels out, you have to remove this um, keeper plate on the bottom. There are four small screws, but these plastic can get brittle. So if you do uh, take one of these apart, just be careful because the plastic does crack and indeed it had started to crack on this model. But without removing this, you can't get that magnet assembly out uh, correctly or remove the wheels for cleaning. So you just remove the four screws there. These are small shouldered screws uh, designed specifically for this purpose. Once that have been removed, you can remove that keeper plate and that reveals the wheels, traction magnet, the um, main magnet and the armature. Gently pulling all this out, it all just um, comes apart. It's all just push fit into slide um, markers that are die cast in the bogey frame. And then the main magnet just pushes out from the top and that removes everything from that bogey side frame. The armature it's just removed from that magnet. The magnet on this model is extremely powerful. It's not going to need any sort of remagnetizing at all. Just dusting off some of the hair and dust off the armature there. And the armature cores look to be in good condition. And as I said, look, doing a screwdriver test, this magnet is extremely strong. It, uh, it really has maintained its magnetism over the years. So I'm just going to dust over the bogey frame to remove any loose surface dust. And then we'll have a look at cleaning the commutator and um, the cleaning the armature up. Now, usual method of cleaning the commutator, a cotton bud and methylated spirits is rubbed over it first to remove any loose dirt. And then I'm gonna gently polish it up with my fiberglass pencil to remove any of the more stubborn, hard to remove stains. This was just polished up very gently. And then once that's done and it's nice and shiny, I'm going to get a cocktail stick that I have chamfered the edge off and then clean the gaps out between the commutator plates. Now you must clean these gaps out because if not, the carbon buildup can cause erratic running, overheating and in extreme cases, short circuits. Now that's done, I'm going to turn my attention to the brushes and remove all that carbon buildup from the brushes previous use and just um, clean the brushes on the ends there which come into contact with the commutator. The pickups themselves are quite dirty, they're quite greasy. So using a cotton bit of mess I'm going to 
clean the backs of those you can see how much dirt's come off that on that cotton bud there and this is quite an awkward shape and i don't want to bend the brass so using my battery as a rest i'm just going to put the pickups there and polish them up with my fiberglass pencil until the brass is shining like a new pin probably not best practice to use the battery but it was the only thing i had handy at the time and then with a the cotton bud and meths just remove any fibers and all of the three pickups are treated in the same way now i'm just going to clean the inside of the magnet housing there where the armature sits there was quite a, uh, you can see there's quite a bit of dirt in there and also the base plate was quite dirty again it was just carbon build up from where the brushes have been spinning and rubbing on the commutator as you can see on that cotton bud the other half of the plate wasn't as bad because that didn't sit underneath the commutator now to reassemble this obviously it's the opposite of what we took it apart so you have to make sure that the armature is correctly orientated with the commutator in the correct place those white sleeves there are actually bearings that sit in the die casting so you put the armature through the magnet and it is very powerful it's pulling the armature to one side and then the magnet slides up through the bogey housing like that ensuring that the um, bearings are correctly seated in their die cast holes they will only go in one way with the small O piece uh, faces towards you when the bogey is upside down like this once it's pushed into place correctly the traction magnets can go back in these again slide in pre-cast holes in the die casting um, like that they don't go in fully they are held in place better when the wheels are in but both of these are put back and then the motor keeper uh, the base keeper plate was actually put on before I put the wheels back on just so I could test the motor and then this whole pickup assembly on the top is slid over the magnet the bolt is re-threaded through the holes in the magnet and the magnet keepers and then holding that nut in place again with my finger on my left hand I just screw that bolt tighter and then it's all back in place the brushes these were polished the ends of the brushes were polished up with a fiberglass pencil to clean the brass to make sure that everything was spotlessly clean for good electrical conductivity and then i turned my attention to the wheels and i did something here that i don't usually condone but because these wheels are made of steel it won't take any nickel plating away from them and i actually clean the wheels and the wheel backs very carefully with a brass brush in my Dremel tool as my fiberglass pencil was just not removing the buildup of um, oxidization on these on this metal so the wheels do have to be spotlessly clean on this model they are the only form of pickups and uh, here I am just take, putting the wheels back in with the traction magnets just pinching the pickups there to make sure they sit behind the wheels and once everything's in place I will refit the base keeper plate now the motor has been tested and just hold that in place with my left hand as i put in these small screws that we removed earlier i do mention it a lot on trash to track but don't over tighten these screws because that plastic is very brittle at the base and it will crack and break it and if you break the holes then the keeper plate just won't stay in place so these small screws are just very gently tightened up they only need to be just tight enough to hold that in place now when it comes to lubrication on this model it is um, best to be felt but not seen because the worm gears spin right next to the wheel backs now if i lathered this with oil or grease when it spins it would coat the backs of the wheels and that would induce poor running so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put some silicon grease on these worm gears but i then remove the majority of it with a cotton bud so that the, uh, the lubrication is felt but not seen and then testing the motor with some leads from a controller you can see that the motor is spinning nicely so i'm going to re uh, reunite it with the body shell the body shell just needs a bit of a dust um, as i said it's not too bad but there's a little bit of fluff and that in there from the years of storage and use so using a paint which just dust it off the motor bogey is put through that hole and then this metal spring clip is slid over the groove in that brass nut at the top there when I can get it um, in I've, I've did it the wrong way it should go in in that way so that the whole face is towards the front of the loco 
and then the motor bogey is back in place and then the roof clips back on now the roof goes in one way there are some details on the side up to the water filler hatch there there are some steps and they need to line with the steps on the roof so that the roof is on the correct way it clips in place um, in the cab ends there and then you can reattach the screw underneath and that is pretty much the class 31 um, all serviced I did notice one thing that the windows were dusty so using some warm water on a cotton bud I just polish all the windows up there and then give it a test on the bench with a controller and you can see now that the model has now it's been cleaned is fully responsive and is actually a very powerful and probably the quietest triang motor I've ever worked on or ran. So now let's have a look at the train set itself and again opening the box lid we come across this instruction manual. Now this is quite informative from the period. Nice cutaway out of an L an L class steam loco on the front. A loco that will feature in a future trash to track. But you go through everything in this little manual power supply to the track there's wiring diagrams track diagrams and the thing that i do like about this dating from this era that everything in this book um illustration wise would have been drawn by draftsmen um in the factory there's no computer design on this at all it's all hand-drawn stuff and it is a it, i do like this sort of thing you know it's it's an art form that's been lost with the advent of computers in my opinion now you've got some maintenance instructions there for the motor that we've just dealt with and also steam engine motors and different types of motors and lubrication charts and everything. I mean, it's a quite an informative book. Um, it's just a pity that it's got that tear in the back. Now continuing the restoration of the train set, I'm going to use some of this rocket card glue to reattach the Triang train set logo, which um, obviously the glue had dried out. You could see there, but using some um, glue, not a lot, I can reattach the RS-51 train set um, sticker back to the cardboard. Any excess glue was just squeegeed away there. That was left to dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my attention to this open-sided wagon, which was damaged. Now, this is actually quite badly damaged. The top has come off from the uh, chassis. But at least it allows me to replace the door quite easily. So once I've replaced the door... Luckily, none of the pins have been damaged. But I can replace the door and then push this back onto its rivet posts. And then using some EMA plastic weld cement and an old paintbrush, I'm just going to drop some down those rivet posts there. And this will, in effect, weld the wagon body back to the chassis. And there's a very effective way of repairing this wagon. So after the glue had been left to set, the wagon was then replaced into the box and it is fully restored. This wagon here that we looked at earlier with these removable container loads, this was uh, in generally good condition. The wheels on this were quite dirty and I did clean them up as this wasn't part of the original train set. This was out of the model shop's rummage box. But I, was, I thought I was actually quite lucky to get one with all three containers still in place. And these just slot onto the pre-moulded um, holders onto the wagon deck there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at all these wagons individually. See what you get in the set. So we've just had a look at that Conflat wagon. This is the Triang horse box. Again in very good condition. Hardly anywhere on the wheels. Certainly no dirt on them. A Triang uh, sheep wagon I believe this was marketed as. So there's a sheep wagon there. Again, very good condition, very tidy, everything's complete. The Triang and Pedigree Prams wagon just needs a good dusting over. All the wagons needed a dusting because they've obviously been stored in a loft somewhere for many years. The United Dairies tank wagon, uh, personal favourite. I used to have one of these when I was a kid that used to belong to my dad. But that had yellowed quite badly, whereas this one is just pure white. It's a pleasure to look at. And these wagons from their time really are quite nice. This one in particular is complete with its ladders and its top filler cap. Then you've got the drop sided wagon that we've just looked at with its uh, working side doors. A good feature, a uh, play feature for children getting this train set in the 1960s. And then you've got the brake van again which is in very good 
um, condition. So that's seven wagons in one train set. I mean, that is quite a lot of wagons and offered a lot of play value. So now looking at the box lid, every corner on the box lid was ripped or damaged. So using some old Metcalf packaging, this card is very good. I'm going to cut some card out and I'm going to reinforce the corners. So once the strips of card were cut, these again were held in place with clamps and rocket card glue. And I'm just um, strengthening the corners there with some glue. The glue did seep out a little bit. But once I did one corner at a time, and once it was dry, it did form a very strong bond. So now that the lid has been repaired and the trains are all now back in the positions where they should be, I'm now going to have a look at seeing if we can get some track from the period and replacing what is missing. Now, luckily enough, there had been a trade-in at Trainsview containing a box of steel track, which I was able to get. And I went through it and got enough for this train set. Now, I'm not a steel track um, lover. It does oxidise quite easily. But with this um, sanding pad, I basically worked every length of track I had with this abrasive cleaner, which is um, about 100 and 80 grit I think it removed the oxidization and brought the rails up to a lovely shine and then using an old rag and some methylated spirits which is a method I used to clean the track on my current layout I just gave all the rails a good polish up and this brought the rails up to a lovely clean standard and it did remove a lot of dirt from this old triang steel track now everything has been cleaned and uh, it's all nice and shiny. I'm just going to demonstrate here with the 31 the benefits of this magnet adhesion for the traction magnets. Now look at that, the steel track with the magnets. That 31 can hold that piece of track all on its own. And that would give it quite a bit of haulage capacity when uh, this was running on a train set with this track. So now that that's all clean, and I've cleaned eight curves and eight um, straights, I'm just going to have a look now at uh, the detail on this track. Considering its age, the casting on the plastic has got timber marks and chairs. I mean, it is quite detailed for its age. And, um, yeah, it, it's come up really nice, and I am happy with it. I have put a couple of extra bits in there just because they fit. Um, but that's because I prefer to have a larger train set on the straight track bit. But now that is the train set complete. We've restored the 31 and dusted everything over. And I went into the loft and I actually found this old home video. So let's take a look. Has he been? Wow, what's this under the tree for me? To Dan for being a good boy all year. I really hope it's a Triang Hornby Freightmaster set, Daddy. Oh, let me try and rip this open. Wow, Daddy, look! It's a Freightmaster set. I don't believe it. I must have been so good this year. Let's take it to the dining table and set it up, Dad. Well, wasn't that nice? So now the fully restored train set's on the table. Let's have a look now and get it all set up and running as it was intended to do. Indeed, it would have made a fantastic Christmas present and the Christmas of 1965. Now, putting all the track together, these are simple push fits with the fish plates already mounted on the track. And I'm going to set the oval of track up and then I'm going to get a controller and connect the wires up and we'll get the uh, get the 31 and the freight master set running round as it was intended to do all those years ago so as i said i put a couple of extra straight bits in here just because they were in good condition and they were in the box um they were too good to bin so uh, i put them in this set and i'm going to set this up now and what i did i'll show you the um 
power connection that I made uh, a bit later on. So now that that's um, the oval is getting set up, I'm going to set the train up in the order that's on the box lid. Um, obviously, with this track was designed for these wagons, so they run extremely well on this track. And the, um, as I said, the box lid shows you the order in which the wagons um wagons are recommended to go so being a bit ocd i will put the wagons in the box lid order so it's the brake van open wagon conflat wagon triang and pedigree prams wagon the united there is tank um, then it's the sheep wagon horse box followed by the class 31 and like i said these big wheeled um triang hornby wagons run exceptionally well on this large track just as they were designed to do and last but by no means least obviously this lovely green class 31 that goes at the head of the train so before i forget i will say that if you've got an engine you'd like to see featured on a future episode of trash to track please email me at dansmodelrailways at gmail.com and we'll have a look at getting it sent over and who knows it may even feature in an episode all of its own now I'm just going to let you listen to this. And I hope you agree that is a very quiet and nice running uh, trying motor. There's the power setup I was on about. I've just soldered two wires to a spare piece of track with crocodile clips that connect to the power controller. Now I also found this in Trains for You, a Triang Hornby operating crane from the same era as the train set so as it's christmas we've uh, we've been exceptionally good and we've now got a crane to play with so i'm going to run this in the consist um as well this like i said is from the same era and this crane this again gives exceptionally good play value for the whoever had this using the open wagon as a runner wagon this crane actually operates with the levers on the side now the lever at the top there lifts the um the boom up and down and there is a smaller lever on the other side which operates the hook so it is a fully operational breakdown crane and i believe this crane is still available in the hornby range now over 60 years later but i thought i'd just include it in this video as it was a nice item and it was still in its original box and i'll just lower the jib there into the wagon and we'll set the train off in motion again Thank you all so much for watching Trash to Track again. I wish all of my viewers and subscribers a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And I will catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.